Next, we want to talk about some of the people that are important to help the president get through their day-to-day -day business. So here, let's get started with the vice president. Here you see Vice President Joe Biden going to town on some ice cream. This is one of Joe Biden's favorite things to do. As vice president, he runs around with his super cool shades on, eating ice cream cones all the time. Let's figure out what the vice president is supposed to do. Here's Vice President Pence sitting there with a bug on his head. Uh, the vice president, the only constitutional job of the vice president is to be the president of the Senate. We talked about how the 25th Amendment was the first time that the Constitution made it official that the vice president would replace the president for the rest of their term. Um, before we had the expansion of like mass media, like newspapers, radio, television, you would rarely see the vice president. The public didn't know anything about the vice president. The vice president was totally unimportant. But now they do have a little more of a role running around and acting, uh, you know, acting as a as an advocate for the president in the media. Uh, the choice of vice president has often been for electoral reasons. Like uh, if the president was a liberal, they might pick a moderate. If the president was old, they might pick a young person. If they're from the north, they might pick a southerner. But they try to pick a vice president who would excite voters and help them get elected. Recent presidents have been more careful with their choice of a vice president. They've used that a little more strategically. They use their choice of vice president to make up for things that they lack. For example, President Obama chose Joe Biden because Obama did not have a lot of congressional lawmaking experience. Joe Biden had been in the Senate for decades, so Obama could use Biden as a tool. President Trump had no government experience, so he chose Mike Pence, who was a governor of a state. That's as close as it gets to being the president. That's like president on a very small scale, so Mike Pence could bring experience to the job. The vice president may have a critical role in policy development. The vice president might have you know, issues that they want to promote or something like that, but the president's going to be able to use the vice president as a tool in negotiations. Um, if the president picks a vice president with congressional expertise, like if the president picks a vice president out of Congress, they're probably going to try to use that person to get to their allies in Congress and get some votes for policies that the president wants. Uh, the vice president will have to take all sorts of diplomatic trips, particularly ones that the president doesn't want to go on. So the president needs to go around and visit all kind of world leaders and stuff like that. But the president can't go everywhere in the world in their time in office. So they'll send the vice president on a lot of these trips to meet with world leaders and to speak with those leaders on their behalf. When the president does not have a lot of experience because they're a newcomer, voters typically like a newcomer, so we might elect a newcomer as president, the, the president should probably choose a vice president who is experienced in government. And that's been the case with a lot of our recent presidents here, like Carter, Clinton, Bush, and Obama. They were all relatively new to working in national government, so they chose vice presidents who had a lot of experience in national government, so they could use the vice presidents as an important helping tool. So a lot of what the vice president does today is serve as an advocate for the president. The vice president will be a spokesman uh, for the president with all sorts of media outlets. The vice president might go on uh, interview shows and things like that that the president doesn't have time to do. Uh, the president's going to do a lot of PR duties for the president, like uh, especially during campaign season. The president can be in one place campaigning, the vice president somewhere else. If the president is busy, the president can't go to all of the meetings that they should be at. Then the president can use the vice president as a stand-in, right? The vice president can go to a meeting for the president and fill the president in later. Vice president does not sound super glamorous, probably, and that is definitely the case. The vice president uh, is seen by a lot of people as a dead end job. We don't usually have a lot of vice presidents go on to uh, greater success after that. Joe Biden is definitely the uh, exception to the rule here. So as Biden uh, goes on to become president, he will become only the fourth vice president to have gone on to win the presidency after Van Buren, Nixon, and Bush. So this is a really rare thing for vice presidents to become presidents. The vice president, definitely not a glamorous job by any means. Another important job, honestly, very similar to what the vice president does here, is the role of the first lady. Uh, so here we see First Lady Michelle Obama. We see First Lady Melania Trump. We'll talk about how the first lady's role has changed and what they typically spend their days doing. All right, first of all, here's the craziest thing about the first lady. Now, the first lady is at work 24 hours a day, just like the president is. The first lady is always being asked to do something. They have to be at their, you know, their best behavior 24 hours a day. They're always monitored. They're always going to be sent to a million places. But the first lady is not a real government job. 
The first lady has no official position and gets no salary. This is insane because they are working nonstop. They are often the center of media attention. They often have played a, uh, a role in advising their husbands. We've got some very uh, famous first ladies like Eleanor Roosevelt, Hillary Clinton, who advised their husbands um, in policy matters because they were policy people themselves. Um, but lately, uh, our modern first ladies, a precedent was set by Lady Bird Johnson. This was Lyndon Johnson's wife, Lady Bird Johnson. She decided that she wanted to use her stage as first lady to focus on a policy issue to advocate for. Now, she focused on national beautification. She wanted to uh, go around and advocate for uh, making the country more beautiful. And we want to see how her decision to do this changed the role of first ladies. So since Lady Bird Johnson, other first ladies have followed her lead. They have taken a, uh, a, an issue that they care about or a policy focus that they want to advocate for, and they use their position that they get a lot of attention. They use their position to bring attention to their cause. So they become a powerful advocate for the cause of their choice. A couple of the most famous ones here. You may have heard of the Betty Ford Center. Um, Betty Ford was Gerald Ford's wife. She wanted to focus on addiction, and so she uh, she advocated for uh, policies to help uh, solve the problem of addiction. And now we have uh, a, a system of uh, rehab centers named after her. Uh, you may have heard of the Just Say No to Drugs campaign. This was Nancy Reagan's campaign. This, she did this to supplement her uh, Ronald Reagan's War on Drugs program. So she started a program called Just Say No about getting the messages to kids to avoid drug use. Both President Bushes had uh, first ladies that were librarians. Both Barbara Bush and Laura Bush were librarians, so they both spent their time in office advocating for public libraries and increased literacy. Uh, Michelle Obama focused on childhood obesity, and she really focused on advocating for changes to the school lunch program. I've spent many years teaching children very unhappy with the changes that Michelle Obama helped to put in place. Uh, but one of our most important first ladies recently has been Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton came from a policy background herself. She was a political figure on her own uh, when she married Bill Clinton. And so when Bill Clinton was elected president, she wanted to put that expertise to use. And she was actually put in charge of planning policy changes for President Clinton. So she was put in charge of planning Clinton's attempt at health care reform um, in 1993. Ultimately, it did not uh, get passed into law, but she had an important policymaking role. So there's a couple important people, the uh, vice president and the first lady, helping the president with their day-to-day -day job, helping the president spread their message. Now let's look at a couple of people on the staff that help the president get the job done day-to-day. -day. 